Okay, welcome everybody. It's Sunday. Let's call this Sound Design Sunday because I think I want to do mostly sound design today. Welcome. I hope you guys are doing great. Let's do a little stream. I'm not going to be uh, streaming for that long as usual. Um, it's not going to be until like 2 a.m. Well, at least most likely not. Um, we'll see how it goes. I want to do some sound design. I want to make some bass sounds, some more bass patches. And maybe... Maybe make one or a couple of sketches for drops just like really rough ideas for drops maybe that could become tracks eventually um and i just want to explore some sound design i um i've been making uh i've been working on some more stuff lately and um every time i hit the drop moments or when i when i start working on the bass sounds i kind of get you know get lost into this thing of just spending too much time on all the little details in the patch itself and then later when I actually you know after the stream has ended and I'm just like the day after I just check what I've done most of the times I realize that a lot of times I, I just spend a lot of time on little things that I shouldn't have done because most of the time I can bring out the nice high end and all of that kind of stuff with processing later it's most often really simple patches that can actually be really good in the end so I want to explore some stuff today and see what we can make. So um, let's see. Disconnected Auto Maiden says, Lit, how's you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I uh, I kind of wanted to stream yesterday evening, but then I was watching the the, the Noisia, sort of like the Noisia invites stream. And I was like, uh, I'm just going to stick around and watching that. Um, which was actually quite good because... I felt super inspired after it. Made a whole bunch of patches last night as well. Um, and I actually spent a whole bunch of time last night just making some drum patterns and other stuff after that stream. So that was quite fun. Um, but, it, but I didn't stream it because it was like uh, late at night. It was like 2 a.m. or something. So that's why we're here today. Let's, um, let's switch to that one. Let's go full screen on this one. So I have just a very simple kick snare pattern already here so that we can get started with that. And I have taken that. Um, do you remember a couple of uh, a couple of streams ago? I'm not entirely sure. It was one or two streams ago, but um, I was making that rack with all the individual snares in it that I liked. I basically continued doing that and I did that for the key of D sharp. So if I'm going to be writing a key in the track of D sharp, I have a rack right here with a whole bunch of snare drums in it. And it's actually a lot of them, as you can see, that are all tuned to keys that would work in a track in D sharp. So I guess D sharp Phrygian because I see an E here as well, but basically they're all tuned to the right key and I map this thing so that I can really easily just switch between them, as you can see. By the way, this little button right here, if you click that, then as soon as I move this to a different one, it automatically selects it. One of the previous streams, I didn't have that selected and every time I was picking a different one, I was like, uh, going to the, going to the right one like this, just click that button and it just changes it automatically which is so much easier um but yeah that's really helpful because if we're gonna be making like a couple of interesting um drop ideas or sketches i don't know if we're gonna make a full drop maybe we end up um I, like i don't want to spend too much time on intro stuff today because you guys know intros are not my issue i can make intros for days actually i got intros for days i need i need drops right so um i want to work as much as possible on that today if i get distracted working on an intro for more than 15 minutes please tell in the chat that i need to stop and need to start start working on drops again <laughs> d sharp is a good high energy doomy vibe i like d sharp d sharp is really good um well i mean any key can be good to be honest but d sharp is a really nice key it's uh especially for bass i really like d sharp for bass um especially if you're doing like tracks that are a little bit more minimal I think going for something like D sharp as opposed to F is just a way better feeling. E, e is really good as well, um, but it just makes it a little bit, especially if you have like a track that's a bit more minimal drum and bass, for instance, it's just like, it just makes it deeper, which is nice.
yeah, we need we need we need drops, basically. Um another thing that I found is I have a shit ton of recordings in my phone. Basically just uh, me really crappily beatboxing something. Um most of the time this happens after I've taken a shower. It's super weird, but I'm not sure if that's just me, but bike rides and showers. So I, I heard other people say taking a shit <laughs> that's another moment but for for some reason that one doesn't really do it for me but um if i'm taking a shower most of the time when i'm underneath the shower i i, I just you know i'm thinking to myself i'm not behind a pc but i'm i'm always thinking about music right um so i'm underneath the shower and then i'll be you know maybe humming something to myself or just like i don't know beatboxing something and then Within like a couple of minutes, there's like a bunch of track ideas floating through my head and I'm just like uh, humming them and all that kind of stuff. And the first thing I do the moment I get out of the shower is grab my phone and record it. But all of those just usually end up sitting on my phone and I never do something with it. So I was going through my phone earlier and there's like a shit ton of ideas for drops as well. I haven't put them on my PC yet, but I need to do that after the stream or maybe tomorrow or something. Um, by the way, next week. Before we get started, next week on um, Tuesday, I'm going to be uh, basically free of work again for a full week. So I'm going to be working next week on Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday up until the next Monday. I'm going to be totally free of work. So next week I want to do a couple of more streams again, which I think is pretty nice. Of course, a lot of time... To relax and think yeah exactly the same thing is when I'm, well it's it's not necessarily relaxing because if i'm having a bike ride i'm definitely not relaxing but for some reason that's another moment where i just get a ton of ideas because i think it has to do with doing something that um either is relaxing because taking a shower definitely is i think i think the heat in the shower also has something to do with it i'm not entirely sure but maybe it makes your brain work better i don't know <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Um, but like but when I'm taking a bike ride, it's it's I think it's just that I'm away from everything that has anything to do with my computer or making music or the place where I normally make music. I think that's that's what has a lot to do with it, I think. It's it's not being in the spot where I normally make my music, just going somewhere else. And that's when I usually get the ideas. When I'm not able to put them in, in my in my doll, you know. So um I have one of them that I found earlier, though, that I just have. It, it's pretty funny. I actually warped it, so if I put it with these drums, it should work. But that's just a little example of what I mean. Like, I just put um, I just put a compressor on it because it's otherwise really quiet. This is what it is. Listen, it, it's super crappy. <laughs> See, something like that. But you can just take that as an idea and think like, hmm, you know what? Put some drums on it, especially like I, I did do beatbox in the past, so I, I can't anymore right now because I haven't practiced it for like years. But um, I still have a bit of rhythm with it, so I can kind of come up with drum patterns on the fly doing this that I probably wouldn't have come up with otherwise. Um, and you can just start copying that because it's really easy to just look at it, especially after you've warped it. Like you can see, I just put in like some warp marks to make sure it's in the right spot. Um, and then you can just start. OK take that and then thinking here like okay i it's it's super crappy but i can hear in this first part that it's doing like a one semitone interval so this section is like on the root and then one semitone up and back to the root that could be a pattern we can copy and think to yourself like okay that could be a tr that could that could be an idea for a track I also record mouth noises too and making them to be groove concepts and ideas. Yeah, that can definitely be good. Like sometimes you just need like um, like an, uh, a little extra thing on your first downbeat or something, like on your first kick to kind of reinforce that thing. And you can just do something like, like a little breath or something. And that can work really well. Just layer that on top of a first kick drum or something instead of a hat or instead of a cymbal or whatever. It's just going to sound more interesting, right? Um, and stuff like that will really work. But the funniest thing is, is that I have so many of these in my phone. Like there's like probably more than a hundred um, accumulated over a couple of years. And I don't think I ever done something with any of them. Maybe, maybe 
one or two that got me like really inspired and that I might have come up with like right before a stream or something like that. I vaguely remember us doing something like that in a in a previous previous stream where we had like a recording of me doing some some shitty beatbox and then I kind of went in and tried copying it. I'm not sure if we actually came up with something good that stream. I don't think we did. Otherwise, I probably would have remembered it, but. It is a really good good thing to do, though. Especially if you uh, if you can at least keep a little bit of a rhythm and you can at least make a couple of different sounds, then you can kind of make drum patterns. And if you do like faster bits, like shuffle bits, you can then if you recorded it, you can slow it down so you can really easily hear what that shuffle thing is sort of like doing and then find sounds that kind of have the similar feeling and then copy the pattern. Anyways, I was also uh, browsing Twitter before the stream, and somebody on Twitter, which I I don't know who it necessarily is, but um, I saw somebody else comment on it, and it was quite interesting. It was a producer by the name Hello. Not sure if you're watching. If you're not, then maybe somebody tells you that I talked about you. I don't know, whatever. Um, he did a little um, a little Twitter post where he showed something in Serum, which was quite interesting. And I was playing around with it as well, and I already found a couple of really interesting use cases for that. So I'll show you what, what he was showing. He was showing how he was um, using the unison to control things that are not the unison. So not the, no detuning or no stereo width, but FM for instance. So let's say we have two saw waves. I'm going to bring this one up one octave and let's bring the level down so that we don't hear it. Let's bring the level of this one up. So now we just have, if we unsolo this, we just have that. It's quite loud. Let me bring that down a little. Okay. So we can do Let's bring the phase all the way down so that they're going to be the same every single time. Because we, we are probably going to be working on some bass today. And let's see what we can do with this. Because he was showing something that was really interesting. Now normally if we bring up the voices on this one for instance. And we have to detune up. First thing it's going to do is going to add width. And it's going to add movement right. Because the voices are going to be detuned from each other. So you get that. Which is your regular sort of like um, unison kind of thing and how unison works. We're not using this oscillator yet, by the way, so don't really mind this one. We're just l listening to what this one is doing. So if we have two voices, we got that, right? Let's go to the global tab. Now, what we can do here is we can control the unison settings. So we can take the range, which is actually the pitch range that the unison voices can be spread out from each other. So a range of two basically means that the voices can be spread one semitone in either direction of the pitch that the oscillator is. So if we set this to zero, then now we should only get the stereo width. But because the voices are being triggered in the same position, it's mono. If we bring this up, we just get a saw wave that's wide without any detuning. Even though the detuning is up right now, but we can bring that down. It's not doing anything at the moment. Because we brought that that range down. If we also bring the width down and bring this down as well. Now we just have two saw, two saw wave voices that are stacked on top of each other. Now, let's do some FM. I'm going to do some FM from B on this one. So we got this. Now, let's go into the global tab. And here we have a couple of more settings because we also have warp. Now warp is this knob. So if we bring up warp to 100%, what that's now going to do, we now get one voice that is at 37% and the other voice is at 0%, so no FM. So now if I play this, we get two saw waves on top of each other. One has 37% FM from B, and the other one has no FM. 
And we can change that, of course. So you can hear whatever I do with this one, we're changing the FM on one of the two saw waves, but the other saw wave remains at no FM, which is really interesting. Um, and you can do the same thing, of course, with the wavetable position. So you can also do this. Well, if you do that, it's going to change the wavetable position for both of the two voices. Um, we don't want that, though. We just want the warp right here. So that's quite fun. Um, we can go to octaves. But you can hear if we start filtering it afterwards, you kind of get uh, a you, you still get a saw wave, but it's just a, a, a different sounding saw wave, if you get what I mean. We're currently only using two voices, though. We can crank this up. Like I was using five voices in, in a thing earlier that I was trying out, and that was quite interesting as well. So. And it's perfectly mono. There's no stereo width happening right now because the width here is all the way down. So there's no stereo being added. It's literally just um, changing the amount of FM per voice. So now we have five voices. So what we basically get is we get one voice that's 28%, one voice that's 0% FM, and then the other voices are in between, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think the other voices are so, sort of like in between 0 and that 28% percent which is kind of interesting but this works for all of these different modes so we can do that on the sync as well we can have all of the voices have a different sync amount we can have um i don't know we can use the bend which doesn't really do much oh wait now we have a couple of different voices that all have a different pulse width amount, for instance, which just gives a pretty interesting tone as well. Asymmetric. If I remember correctly, one of them actually sounded like a chord, which was really weird. Yeah, I think it's this one. Asymmetric. If you use asymmetric, you get like... I don't know. It, it was a different one. I'm not sure which one it was, but... I had one I had one instance at one point which kind of sounded like a major third interval but then like an octave up or something which is really interesting. Um Yeah, exactly. You can resample it to a wavetable, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. And because you can apply it to a lot more than just FM, it's quite powerful and quite interesting actually. Um we can take AM We just got a really beefy saw wave. We can try RM. Thank you. 
Already, that's starting to sound pretty cool. And it's literally just a little FM or a little RM on these voices. It's not, it's like, it's different than when we just do one voice and just do some RM. Like, that's what it's normally doing. Right? Then we. That's what you would normally get. Which is cool too. Like a little bit of RM, be tuning that oscillator that's doing the RM, and then doing some distortion. That is pretty much nice, but having it like that is pretty cool because then we can have like way more voices and then sort of like spread it apart. And we can still utilize this as well, I would assume. Like the phase start position, I'm not sure if that's still random. I, th I would assume it is. Let's check it out. Yeah, the phase start position is still random. So we can basically still utilize the unison, have like all these different voices, um, while they still sort of like get like different settings on the RM or on whatever is set here. So yeah, I, I saw it on, on Twitter coming, coming along and I was like, hey, that's actually quite interesting. Yeah, I know, and Vidal has similar things as well. And, uh, I I indeed, Vidal has a very similar thing, but Serum is able to do it as well. Um, I had never used these settings right here. Like, I knew about the width, but I just never got into the, like, the... I never saw this and went like, oh, wait, we can use it like that. <laughs> you know? Um, but it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Can can actually do quite a lot. <laughs> And for some reason, even if we stack the voices up to like something a lot more, um, the modulation that is happening because of the detuning on that second oscillator remains very, um, how do you say it, very consistent. Like normally if we have like um, the unison controlling the pitch and we use anything more than like three voices, the movement gets a lot of, uh, well, gets more inconsistent and more random, if you get what I mean. Because of the pitches, of course. The pitches are drifting in different speeds and they're kind of like different, slightly different pitches, which are creating random movement the more voices we have. That's why, like, if we have um, a saw wave with like 16 voices and a random start position on the face, and we just have that one, sounds like this. Right? As opposed to, even if we have like the, the width all the way down. Like the movement isn't really consistent unless we use something like two voices. Then it gets that clear, like, that clear wobble, that clear oscillation, right? So, I actually already made this patch here, so let's just go to that. Um, but for some reason, this way, even if we use something like 16 voices, it's just getting, I don't know, it's, it's starting to sound fuller, but that movement is kind of remaining on that same oscillation. It's not changing, which is really cool. And I think that has to do because the pitches are the same. So the pitches of the oscillators of the individual voices are not slightly different. And thus they, they are not aligned in the same position. The, the face is still different for each of one of the voices, but because they are not in a different pitch, they're also not drifting away from each other. So they're staying in the same offset from each other. And that's why the modulation also remains the same.
Yeah, I, I would assume that also does things because that affects how the voices are spread. Um, but we're not using any width, so it's not spreading the voices in, 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 in the stereo field. It's spreading the voices different across that warp parameter. So if we use something like super, it's probably going to sound different. That one is really loud. I mean, it's so subtle, you don't really hear it. It's very subtle, so it's not really going to do much, but it does make a slight change, I would assume. But that's quite interesting. So, and you can do that with a lot of things then, because that opens up a lot of possibilities like that, which is quite interesting. Um, let's see, what are we going to make? Can we add some, uh, some percussion to that first. Let's see if we have some, uh, percussion. Uh, let's try one of these. Not, I have no clue what these sound like, but let's try one of these. I won't play them solo because people uh, shouldn't be ripping this one. Not in time. Now it is. <clears throat> uh, what kind of bass sound should we make first? Yo, where's that note? Okay, well, whatever. I would swear I literally just clicked there, but... <laughs> That's quite long. Let's make that a bit shorter. What kind of pattern could we do with a drum pattern like that? Probably something like... Uh... Dun 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 something like that. Loop. Let's do a little FM on it. Let's try that one. I would assume this would need like a... Um, I guess a slightly rhythmic, stabby sub bass, you know, one that is that goes like boom, 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 and then you can layer stuff on top of it. You can basically just just go all out with whatever you want to layer on top of it. It's probably going to work fine. Um, 
But like, what I would normally do is I would get into this, I, I would get that idea. I would, I would be like, yeah, that would be great. And I would be making that sub base patch. And then the moment I get that sub base patch, that's where I should stop. And then I should think, okay, now it needs something on top of that, as opposed to trying to make a secondary layer of that sub base and seeing it like as a one full base patch. Um, because normally I would start trying to make a mid range layer on top inside the same patch, maybe even, or maybe inside of a rack and trying to make the two work together, where most of the time, all you need to do is just leave that alone. That's your baseline. Now start thinking about what can I add in the mid range in the top frequency and think of that like as a top melody or something like that, as opposed to an extra layer on top of the bass. Because sometimes in drum and bass, the bass lines are actually really simple. Like it's just a very basic patch with maybe a slight bit of FM that creates like a nice harmonic or a nice tone. And from there, it's just distortion, distortion and bringing out high end, adding some noise, uh, stuff like that. I mean, there's there's exceptions, of course, but that's already getting a bit of that movement that i'm looking for or that i would think for such a drum pattern would work like and that drum pattern is still very basic as well it's literally just uh the vibe of that it's it's actually from uh, the caracol project's patreon this this loop right here um, but it's like a techno percussion kind of vibe so um this would work really well with a with a four to the floor drum pattern underneath it that kind of a drum pattern but it works very well in a drum bass track as well if you write so sort of like the track around it um and for a track like that, I would kind of imagine a bass line that is kind of pretty much doing a very repetitive pattern. Like that. Just throughout the entire drop. And then on top of that, there's just layers and layers of percussion coming in and just stuff, risers coming in and all that kind of stuff. Um, and maybe some stab sounds here and there, but this could be sort of like the core of the idea of the drop, if you get what I mean. Um, but we need to make the bass sound better though, because I do want to sort of like make some patches that actually sound good. Did we get rid of that, that high end that we don't need? Now we sort of like already get a bit of that. Can maybe strengthen that a little bit by adding some on the drive as well. Oh wait, I added envelope three. My bad. Just a tiny amount. And then most I might actually do is just add a little bit of noise on top of it. Just like some extra noise. Although I don't even think it needs it to be honest. Um, but can be fun. Um, what we could do, for instance, is um, take maybe the high pass noise, because we don't have another filter here. Um, maybe that high pass one right here. And we can just use like another LFO to kind of shape that a little. Something like that, maybe. You honestly probably don't even need much. Let's um do 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 go and do this. Let's 
uh, really quickly set up some side chaining as well. Just give that a little boost so that we know it's actually ducking everything away. It needs a let, let's actually get rid of the noise because that's already too much. We don't really need that. Um, it needs a different harmonic. Let's um, go for the harmonic series, maybe. That way we can kind of affect which harmonic it is. So we can bring this down maybe to. Have we also done it on the FM? Yes. Let's tr let's bring that. Let's take that off. That's way more powerful. And then we can also find the harmonic we need. We can maybe bring that up. And let's try doing a tiny bit on it right here. See, that's maybe already too much. It needs to be more bassy. Let's see. That's bassy. That's also going to be a massive change, like where we start in this pattern. We don't even need to do that. It's just going to make it less clean. I kind of like it when we start right here. So we get um, basically this pattern. That pattern. That sounds cool with the with the percussion. Um, let's see if we can. It needs a little extra thing. Could oh yeah, we could do this. Um, I haven't saved these yet, but I should have them right here. Let's take a sine wave and just drop that in here. Right, just C3 or something. Key track that. Then I should be able. Let's take C4. Okay, so that works. Okay, so for some reason it sounds like it's two semitones off. Not sure why that is, but... Oh, wait. Oh, I could have used this one, of course, but now we can actually change it in semitones, which we cannot do on this one. I wonder what happens if we distort it really heavily. 
sound really weird, but le let's see. And make a distorted variety of it, and then use the filter here. I know, still sounds like shit, but bear with me. Chat has also gone super quiet suddenly. Some reason. Try out if we just use that one. They're doing something. Oh yeah. It is doing something. Interesting. Yo, DJ Hennessy, and yo, Angelite. Welcome. Um, yeah, okay. Um, that's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove that percussion, and uh, move that bass as well. We're gonna make something else. I wanna make a bunch of. Don't wanna make a return track. I wanna make a bunch of um, bass sounds that um, can work as like the first bass sound in a drop. So like, I guess like a, a bit of a step kind of sound. Um, because those, I definitely lack. Now those should be pretty simple to make. Let's just make a note in D sharp. Somewhere around there. In fact, let's try and write a little idea for a bass line right here. Um, now I had this thing here at the top. Let's just see. What was that sounding like again? Okay. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So that's uh, doing a... Uh, what is that? Something like that.
and then I... Okay. Now, all we know um, is that this first sound is going to be a stab. Because if I, like, yeah, it, it was just a recording from my phone. Basically, I was going through my phone. I found a whole bunch of recordings. In fact, there's a lot more in here, as you can see. I just found this last section and it's just me, my crappy beatbox kind of thing. Um, and somewhere in that session, I basically suddenly did this. And this is how I come up with a lot of ideas for tracks. And most of the time, I never remember them. I never listen to these recordings ever again. Sometimes I come up with one and I record it into my phone and then I really shortly after that get home and I still remember it and I actually just go into my doll and without listening back to it, I just make that thing. Um, but most of them just live on my phone and just never get, get anything done with. So I figured today I just picked one, <laughs> and I, uh, which was from earlier today when I was taking a shower. And um, yeah, I decided to uh, see if we could make it work. Or from yesterday, I think it was. And somewhere in that recording, I suddenly did this, and then I th thought to myself, hey, that could be a tune. Here. <laughs> Fart bass. Ah, <laughs> oh, that higher thing, I was doing it here. Okay. Let's see if we can turn that idea into 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 a, into a dropped idea, into into a little thing. You didn't miss that much. I, I talked a little bit about um, about uh, using serums, um, using serums. Um, what is it? Unison to control things that are not the unison detune or. Um, the stereo image, but control stuff like ring mod or FM, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like shit if you listen to it on its own, especially if there's nothing else playing. I, I compress the hell out of it, so that also makes it sound even worse because it brings up all the mouth noises and everything. But I don't fucking care. Like, there's so much more in here because there's probably more drop ideas in here as well. That's actually the same pattern. That's actually the same pattern, but then like that. Da, da, da. That could be the whole. That's kind of the idea, I guess. The the thing that I did later is just a variation on it. <laughs> but everybody can make fart noises with his mouth, so you can do stuff like that too and come up with ideas for your own tracks. So this would be a, a step bass. See, that's just what I did there. So, and so much easier because if you're just thinking, you know, you're just only thinking about it, then it's just like it, whatever comes out should sound pretty natural if you can turn it into a track. <sighs> Sometimes it works a lot better than, than just sitting there and just trying to throw shit, shit at the wall until it sticks, which sometimes works too, but. Not always the best solution. And then a higher thing here is what I did. What was the beatbox guy name? That that's me. <laughs> you should use that um breath sample you recorded during the beatbox kick. You mean that first one? It's it's super distorted. That one. I mean, are we hearing the kick? Ah, uh, it's just super loud. 
That's it. I mean, totally. It could totally work. Definitely. It could definitely work. Just high pass it so that it's not interfering with the kick itself. Do something like that, maybe. But yeah, indeed, you can do stuff like this very, very well, and it, it's just going to work. I just take that. It's a mono recording as well. There's no stereo in this. It's just mono, so we can, you know, apply stuff to it to make it more stereo as well. Or even take like just something like that and then make that wider. But honestly, with the high end, could totally work. Especially if we start making a step sound as well, that's going to layer on top of it as well. What did I do here? What's that? <laughs> Some of these sounds sound so weird if you hear them by itself. What the fuck is that? Oh, okay. I don't even know how I made that sound, to be quite honest. Whatever. <laughs> But I kind of hear that there's no kick there. So we could take the kick out there. So we're going to have a pattern where we're only going to have a kick there. Cool. So kick here and then oh, nothing but snares. Kick here, nothing but snares. And then there's probably going to be some percussion in here as well. But we need to make the bass sounds first. At least the first step sound or something. So let's take another serum. I'm just going to leave this here. Let's just duplicate that one. And I'm just going to take this one, and yeah, that's going to be the only one. So we're just going to work on that one first. That's a perfect perk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's, that was probably just me trying to make a kick drum while also catching my breath or something like that, you know? And then, and then you get something weird like that. I mean, that's what most beatbox sounds are, are anyway. It's just making a sound and then trying to catch your breath um let's try using that um thing that i was showing earlier so let's take something like five or six voices let's bring this down and this as well and let's bring that up and let's maybe use some fm or should we try sync maybe that could be fun sync no window bring this up Yeah, this was the one that's, that was sounding like a chord, of course, because you have now you have multiple synced voices that are all different intervals from each other. Got some pretty interesting tones, some overtones this way.
could be a could be a nice health time bass or like a health time tune like so one with a more like hip-hop kind of pattern <laughs> not really the step base that i was gonna make but okay cool um i'm just exploring that thing right here because it's quite fun you can do quite a f interesting tones with this thing let's um grab that one that one is quite nice quite like that This is kind of what you get if you take something like that and bounce it to a wavetable, basically. This is just like unison detune, uh, like a couple of detuned oscillators from each other, a couple of detuned sound waves, and that basically made into a wavetable. Take the same one, second one. Okay, it's getting somewhere. To play D sharp.
Like I'm basically making a sound that could work on the first beat. That works basically layered on top of a kick drum. So if we play this and this is just... Yeah, okay, that's just a saw wave. Let's just uh, turn that into a quick detuned saw with a low pass on it. So we have like a Reese. So we can kind of hear what we're doing. I'm also going to mute that noise for now because I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. Um, let's group these and already set up some sidechain as well so that we don't have to worry about any of that. Bring the level of that down so that we know it's... Okay, let's take that. So that way we can basically we always get sidechain. Um, Nice. Still that mono, of course, but we can do a little chorus on it to get get some width. And bring this down. Quite like that. You have that with a with a kick drum. Okay, not bad. Um, let's add some. I I am gonna add some more percussion, but just some hats or something to this, so that we have something to work with because it sounds way too empty right now, and I'm getting distracted by that. Um. Don't necessarily need that. Let's grab. The trusty old sooth hats. Let's just search for a quick, um, I don't know, maybe some shaker or something that we have like some extra stuff happening. Mm. We have one that's a bit more
search for top instead. We're probably going to find a bunch of interesting loops that way that we can use. We probably need something more like that, like just really static, right? It's going to work a lot better for that sort of like pattern that we have because this like too sustained if you get what I mean like oh wait that works yeah that works um we have a 16 one as well oh we've got some house loops I love using house loops in drum and bass to be quite honest like, these are not the best but like we have like those vengeance packs are great for that, like honestly. Um uh Vengeance, no, let's uh not sure if I have them in here to be honest. Don't think so. Oh there's a couple ones. Like sometimes just oh yeah, some stuff like that. Can be really fun in drum and bass. Like if you take something like that, which is normally just like more like a housey kind of thing. We can take like a shorter section, let's say two beats. And you already get much more of a kind of a vibe that could work in drum and bass. And we can change that around, try different things. So and it's just a simple house loop. That's just a percussion thing. Like those other ones, like the more do we have ones here? Those kind of things. Are perfect. Even better are the ones that's like the regular house loops and shit. Where are those? Should have those as well. Like sometimes, stuff like this works absolutely insanely well on drum and bass. Most of the time you need to have one that has like a nice shuffle. Or a good hats. But sometimes it just totally works. But that's not what we're gonna do. I don't wanna spend too much time browsing those shitty paint and samples. <laughs> How much headroom do you usually work with? Um, well, you can see what I'm doing most of the time. It's just I'm taking, um, I'm taking my groups, and I make sure that my groups are basically at minus eight decibels. And then most of the time, my groups are hitting at zero itself. So like, we're clipping slightly on this group right now because of the hats, um, but I can just add a little limiter on that that's what i would normally do just take like fab filter pro l and just take that one maybe so that way i know my drums are never clipping and now my, my drums are basically hitting at zero decibels at any time, um, my main kick and snare at least, and and like the extra gain that comes in because the hats are layered on top of the kick and snare is basically just cut off by the by the by the limiter. And then I bring the group down to minus eight, so I have like eight decibels of headroom from like my drums, and my drums are going to be the loudest element in the mix, um, followed by the bass. Bass usually sort of like the same level as the drums, um, to be honest, and then just the bass ducks away so that the their space for the drums. Um, and then usually when I do that and sort of like start with that as a starting point, 
minus eight for my drums and then my bass sort of like sitting around there as well. Uh, most of the time I mix anything around that and then I usually end up with something that's like uh, maybe minus four, minus five decibels, something like that in the end. And then it's just a little extra push that you need to do on the master. But most of the time when I'm producing on the master, there's a limiter as well. So there's just another limiter here that's boosting it up again with eight decibels. So we're not getting any, any limiting. See? That's just pushing it back up. So that's just making up for that, what I'm doing here. And there we get a little thing because... The bass group is not limited. So the bass group, I'll probably do a limiter on it as well. To catch any peaks like that. You can play around with that and, and using that. Um, safe mode is pretty pretty decent, has like no distortion as at all, pretty much. But can sound less quiet or less loud than, for instance, the modern mode. But usually I'll just have that on there or something, or maybe even just like a soft clipper or something like that, just to make sure that we don't get anything exceeding zero. Um, and then you can also push everything into it, if you get what I mean. So that, that way you can make everything sound pretty pretty loud. Um, but now both these two groups are not not going above zero. So now if we look at, at, at here, we're only getting a little thing happening here. That's where the, the bass and the kick overlap, basically. Even though there is sidechain, it's just uh, sidechaining the trench in the way. And if we do that, we get less of that, of course, but hey. I need a drink, one moment. Time to wake up. Okay. That's a little step sound. Let's, um... I like that as a sound. Now let's just um, see what that sounds like if we add a little bit of a reverb to it, because most step sounds sound better when they have a little bit of reverb to them. And I'm just drinking a Red Bull, like usual. Super loud. It's just being slammed into the limiter anyway, so it's not that important. Doesn't matter. Let's try that one. Um, group this. Let's just add it as like a, a parallel thing. Just do. That, and then probably... EQ this one.
Doesn't need to be that long, just... See how much of a difference that makes? Um, and then... Do it afterwards. And then saturator, maybe, which is just going to take care of the clipping as well. Oh, I do like that. What it's doing there. The tryout is EQing that again after it. Um, sometimes you just need like multiples of things. Have like EQ, distortion, another EQ. Only if it needs it, honestly. I, I, I only separate it into sub if it needs it. Um, and for a sound like this, you can just as fine make it with the sub in the, in the sound itself. Like, that has plenty of sub. Like, if we look at that, um, it, it's already clipping again now, but we can... I'll just be lazy and just throw this one on it. Like you can already see at the top here, like that has a clear oscillation in it. It has a clear amount of sub. Um, and we can see it as well. Like there's a clear sub in there. So we, this sound wouldn't necessarily need it. So it really depends. Um, most of the time when I'm making sounds these days, I'm doing stuff like this, which is actually pretty simple as well. Um, take like a sound that is pretty basic. Heck, we could use these right here. See, we can make a second sound. Like if you take like a very simple thing, let's say, I don't know, maybe a sub with another sub oscillator a little bit higher maybe do some fm Okay. We don't really have much here to work with for a filter, but we can try it out. I mean, it does kind of do something. Yeah, exactly. You want to bring the thing out. You want to bring the tone out. The harmonics, the tone and the resonance indeed, especially with sounds like this. You're working on the low end first and this low end already, even though it's not loud enough yet, it's pretty powerful. We can bring this drive up. That's a really good sub. 
right? And you can basically now call it a day in Serum. Basically. This could be, this could be your base. You're done. What we need to do now is post-processing this. Or maybe layering it up. Like, we might want to have a little bit of noise in this. Now, I could use the noise in Serum in the other one. You know what, let's just do that. Or should we separate the noise? I mean, it's pretty easy to do. Just group this in a rack. And just duplicate the, the chain here. Now, we also have the same shape on the LFO right here. And just turn these off. Just take a bit of noise. We can take any noise that we want now as well. And just assign that to here, maybe. And then we can use this filter to run the noise through it so that we don't have any low frequencies in the noise. Why is that not showing up? Oh, that's why. So we have that combined with... Just a tiny bit of noise, just ever so slightly, because that's going to help with bringing that stuff out later. So now you can get really carried away with this. What I would do is I would, because this sounds good on its own, right? You could have this as your baseline and that's going to be powerful enough if there is a good amount of higher layers on top of it. Um, like if there's extra higher stuff on top of it that gives it the mid range that it needs, this baseline is powerful enough and you don't need much more than that. Um, It's just that it needs extra stuff layered on top of it. And this thing, you can actually make this have extra stuff on top of it by just simply... Let's let's see. We would I would start by making a rack. So I would start by just adding an audio effect rack after this. And I'm, I'll do that because then I can create a chain. And we'll just call that... Um, through or something like that. So that's just basically, or pass or something. Let's do pass. So that's just basically, this is just the sound going into here and there's no effects. It's just going straight through the rack. And then we make another chain. And that's where we're gonna do our distortion effects and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna solo this and now we're gonna just, uh, just gonna start layering stuff in here, just effects on, on top of it to see what it does. So... What can we do? Overdrive? Let's solo this. Kind of like that. And it's just... And usually pretty small amounts. Ooh. And because we have the other layer, we don't have to worry about what the sub is doing at all. We have this other layer, which has the sub that we need. Um, and it's, it's also mono, right? Yeah, it's perfectly mono. So whatever we do on here, we can also start adding, adding width and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's try dynamic tube. Adds a little bit of a slight movement to the noise as well, which is cool. Um, yeah, and let's just uh, go into my uh, actual VST plugins. Let's just 
pick some random distortion plugins. See what we have. Um, do we have wave arts? Oh yeah, sure. Let's try this one. So on the distortion effects, you do all the sound design. That, that's where you just get crazy and just start experimenting. Um, and whatever comes out, it doesn't matter what the sub is doing or any of that, because you already have that. And we're basically only using this second layer to add something to the dry sub, which has no no extra sort of like interesting things happening in the in the in the higher frequencies. Um, and by doing it that way, we, we never lose that powerful sub thing, unless we, of course, do something that face cancels it with the sub. But we can make sure that that doesn't happen by, at the end of this chain, doing some EQing and making sure it's high passed. Um, we're only looking to find something that creates, like, extra interesting character, basically. And then we're just going to do that by fucking this thing up and seeing how, how crazy we can get it. So, let's do that. And it gets really fun, because the longer the chain gets, um, the more all these things are going to do. Because at first, if you only have the overdrive, it's going to do only so much. But as the chain gets longer, all the things really early on in the chain start doing a huge change if you start messing with them. So that can become really interesting. Let's do some multiband stuff. Here we can bring out some... stuff right around there I can already show you, if we just take this now and just do this. We already have something now that we can layer on top of the sub again, so... See, and we keep that original sub, that's still in there, and it's not changing. It's just that this is now adding high end to it. Um, and you can get so crazy with this. We're definitely not done yet. Let's um, da -da -da -da. add some more interesting stuff into the mix. Let's uh, go for... Mm, let's grab a serum effects and drop that... Uh, I guess pretty early on in the chain could be fun. Let's try it all the way at the front. And using the chorus. Turn it off. That's going to add width now. See? 
So now we get that width on that secondary layer, which potentially could create some face cancellation with the, the original layer, but that's something we can fix as well. I'll show you how in just a bit. First, we want to create the width itself. I'm just going to bring the Lopez all the way up. Quite like that. That's kind of all right. You can bring it down a bit. As long as we have it in there with just a tiny bit, it's not really gonna gonna you know be much of a problem. We could also have it fully wet, and then we can group this serum in another rack, create another chain. That's gonna be our mono chain. And this is gonna be our stereo chain. But because we don't want the stereo chain to face cancel with the mono chain, what we can do is we can put a utility after the serum effects. And right here we have the width knob. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to choose mid side mode. Now this controls not the width, but the mid and side separate. And if we bring this all the way up, we only get the side information. So now, basically what we get is we get only the stereo information that the chorus is adding and everything that's in the mono signal is being removed. But because we still have the mono signal here, now we get a perfect stereo thing that sounds really good probably if we just play it like now. See, it's nice and white, but if we turn this into mono, it should just sound exactly the same as without this rack. Let's see. Not exactly, it's slightly different, but it's very similar. Not sure why it's slightly different. It should not be slightly different. Because we're basically telling, we're basically just removing everything in the in the center. But maybe if I use the uh, Oxengo version, and just mute the mids, All right, we still get a little bit of a a change for some reason. But it sounds pretty good actually in mono as well. Not minding that. But now we got some width on this one. Also, hear a little bit of a click. And that's gone as well. Oh yeah, and uh, playing. Let's let's just call this um, width, and then we can play around with the position of that as well. So if we change the position, it's gonna create the width in the different spot of the processing chain, which is gonna change the sound as well. So that's something we can play around with a lot as well. Um, let's uh, keep keep going. This is a really good way to make interesting sounds. Um, I really like it doing doing this way. You should just start with something super basic. It's not necessarily that complicated sound design wise. Um, let's try doing a little reverb thing. So I'm going to add a reverb. 
Make it pretty long. Make sure it's not cutting too much of the high end. And let's bring this down. And let's automate the mix right here. So I'm just going to do... probably going to be later in the in the chain to be honest because when we have more high end so another thing we could do we could we could play around with the uh, erosion erosion is quite nice to add some high end into this which is also stereo it's always nice We can go back in here now, for instance, and start messing with this one. Let's take take another sine wave. Why didn't you do that? Okay, Let's key track that one. Is that doing anything? Like I'm not hearing it at all, but that might be me. Maybe it's just because these are so loud that they're overpowering the uh, sine wave for some reason. Let's uh, get rid of that then. We can do it in this one. Because the science, all the processing is after this whole thing. So we can just uh, remove that. Move the FM. That, there's nothing else happening here. Remove the noise. That one. Oh no, not remove the noise, my bad. We actually need the noise that's creating the noise in the in the bass, a little or a little bit of it. Yeah, so we definitely need to keep that. Um, but we can use maybe this one and just pitch it up a couple of octaves. Yeah, that works. Okay. 
And we can start using that. So let's um, assign this to the level. I'm just going to do a full and then just call this um, harm or harmonic or something. And then we can automate that in every now and then. Let's see where we're going to automate it in. Um, might actually want to make this a little bit longer so that we have more of a longer clip going. That. This. hear what it's doing right that's kind of cool because that's running through get together with the rest of the stuff through all the distortion so the moment we start adding stuff like this we can get like interesting stuff happening and then if we switch this one to the harmonic series we can bring this one down to let's say one Almost don't hear it now. We can use this to find the harmonic that we want. That gets pretty interesting. Or we can say we want to have one step at the start. Do something like this. You can kind of get like extra. And then, obviously, that we need to do more distortion for that to really work, but that's, that's something I've been doing a lot la lately, especially if we take, for instance, two, uh, another harmonic series. And then we can do the same thing on that one, have like another macro, set that one to a different one. So let's say this one is four, this one is five, and now we can use the two of them. Which is also pretty cool. We can have Harmony 2. And that that opens up a lot of interesting possibilities of stuff that you can do with that. Now let's think. Um, I want to have a different sort of like pattern on this. Let's see. It needs to be.
see if we can come up with a good one. Um, Yeah, I think I want to have a different pattern. Um... I'm just quickly trying to make a pattern. Um... Coming later. Do this. Take that. Kind of thinking back to that thing that I had here. Um, that was cool. Um, dun 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 dun. And probably gonna take this one out here as well and have like some kind of weird sound there because that kind of works there. So some kind of weird reverse sound going into here. Then that works. Dun, 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 dun. And here I had a what is that? I think. Okay, cool. And then here we're gonna have like a fill section or something. Just get rid of that. Let, let's mute that one. Yeah, okay, let's loop that. We can focus on this section. Um, What did I do there? Yeah, fuck this layer. Fuck this layer. We'll uh, we'll find something better for that. Okay. 
Now I think earlier on in this long fall, I had some other things as well. Here. Dun 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 That could work. I think. Uh, mute you again. Group that one. The mix all the way up on this one. Remove this. Mix all the way up. It's always doing that, and then just make another chain. Then we can map this one to macro one. So that's going to be the gain of the of the reverb. So bringing the reverb up, and that means we can also do stuff in front of it to make sure that the reverb does more stuff. So if I put like um, some heavier distortion in front of the reverb, and let's just mute the reverb for now. Bring this up, uh, solo that one, so we can hear what this one is doing.
So it's basically creating more extra frequencies there now. And then we can put an EQ on it as well. Kind of. Tell the reverb to only respond or respond more to these frequencies here. Maybe, maybe give it a little boost there so that we get more high frequencies in the reverb. Like we don't hear the reverb now because it's turned off, but we're not going to hear what this one does. So now if we turn the reverb back on. See, we have a much more, we have a reverb that has a lot more high end. So now we can bring that down and we don't hear it. So now we just get a regular sound. And if we now automate this level, we can create stuff like that. And obviously this sound is definitely not done yet, but um, we can play around with this as well. It's a little bit much maybe, a little bit much high end. Let's bring it down a bit. But if we take these off and just have the reverb by itself, we get that, see? So we're just telling that reverb to be brighter and be more prominent, which is good. Um, Yeah, the initial idea was this, right? Having that. So then the reverb would come in here, which would also make sense because that's where I... Sorry if I don't finish my sentences, but I am trying to do something productive and come up with something. Yeah. That sounds like sh sound is shit, but we're gonna make it better. Let's also rename these. So this is the noise. What can we do to this to make it more interesting? Mm. What if we take another kick drum as well and put that at the start of that one so we get... Oh, that was an anti-climax. It needs to be a lot bigger. That's one thing that's for sure. Why does it sound so quiet? And we already do quite a bit of processing, so... I'm also getting lost a little. One moment. I need to rename this one. That is the reverb... Chain... Because we need more trash. Make that layer louder, that extra layer, because it sounds nothing like the uh, the first step bass in terms of how powerful it is. Let's play the bass by itself. No side chain. I'm aware that the bass itself is just weird it's as well. Let's
Oh, that's actually quite cool. Having the first ones longer and then the second ones shorter. That could be fun. So in this trash, let's go multi bend again. We're really only we really only need high bend. So we can add distortion to that. So let's try one of these. One more thing that I'm going to do. That noise right here is adding quite a bit, right? See? I would like that to be more dynamic. So, let's grab... Let's first of all save. <clears throat> and then let's go into the... Modulators. Let's grab. We're gonna grab the shaper. Put that in front of here. I'm just gonna create like a shape, like that. I guess. Can we remove that one? How do you remove points? Alt click, Shift click. Yeah, Shift click. So we can do something like that. Um, map this to the amount here. Now it's going to do that, which is not what we want. Um, or should we use the LFO maybe? I don't think we have to. Just going to make it alpha beat that should be long enough i think yeah this is one beat so alpha beat should be long enough click okay let's do a little shape like that maybe and then let's add an, uh, where is it? An external instrument right here, which is gonna send the MIDI back into this same track and then into, can we not send it into the shaper? Are you for real? Okay. I thought you would be able to send it right into there, but apparently not. Can we do it with the LFO? <laughs> what? Why can you not just send it into here? Am I missing something, or can you really not re-trigger the LFOs like that? I know it has this re-trigger button, but... Re-triggers the phase of the LFO disabled in sync mode. It's not synced, though. So, if we click that, it re-triggers it. Helpful. Really helpful. Why can't we just do it like this? Send it into there. That would be so much easier. Well, in that case, let's get rid of these.
I'll do it myself then. <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna be annoying, then I'll just do it myself. I'll just add more noise to it later in this chain with this. So we can just do that. Uh, let's rename this one. I just want to rename the serum itself, but we cannot do that apparently. Uh, I don't want to rename that. I want to rename this so I can find it. Um, let's group that. And let's rename that group so we can find it. Add noise. So now I want to send this one into add noise serum effects. Guess that one. So if I'm correct, we should now be getting the MIDI signal into here. Um, do we need to do that? Not sure if it's already triggering, but yeah, it is. So now we can just add noise to it as much as we want. Okay. That's easier. Um It actually sounds as if we're starting the, the, the pattern right here, or at least to me it did. Actually, it might actually be better. Has it also copied for that automation, though? The noise. Oh, the reverb not, for some reason. Okay, good. Drop you here. Let's find a good snare. That's going to make a big change. Oh, that would be nice. Like a clap almost, but... Um... Did I move that clip to a different position? I think I did. Where was that thing again? That one idea. Is it still here? No, it's not. 
stupid idea somewhere else. Somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. Right here. Ah, uh, there. This part. That's where the original idea was, what, which I'm trying to replicate. Let's just get rid of all of this. If I'm correct, this is that part. Yeah, and then that higher thing at the end, which we have here, if you got what I mean. We just need a different sound for that. We don't hear it yet. <clears throat> now, those extra harmonic things I haven't used yet. Um, those can be really cool to bring in, in like, um, how do you say it? Like, uh, later sections. So this one is up for some reason, but... I just moved the drums group into the, or the, the bass group into the drums group. My bad. My, my, my fingers click faster than that I, or my, I move my mouse faster than I click my fingers. <laughs> Let's turn the sidechain back on. So we can actually hear the snare drum that we're changing. Starting to get something. That last thing at the end is kind of cool. Beefy. We're getting somewhere with this one. Let's see. Um, we had the other harmonic as well, though. I only. Let's call this one. Uh, um, what is this? It's not noise anymore. This is uh, noise and harmonics. Um, this is uh, um, sub. Let's just call it mids because it kind of contains the mids. And we have this one as well, that other one. So what if we take that other one, if we do a little extra thing, see what happens. Oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. We need this one. Uh, 
and we can go back in here and we can play with this. this down see so we can change the extra harmonic coming in which is really cool um we can even combine two harmonics in certain sections that's that's going to be really odd then it's going to really affect how it interacts with the distortion as well so if we do something like this we now get two harmonics coming up and we can control them individually from each other so if we do both to one and then do something like, I don't know, that's four and then maybe four and five. See what that does? If we play this without the sub and only listen to the harmonics with the distortion. See, it's already creating a bit of movement together because they're not the same pitch. They're basically just different harmonics. I'm not entirely sure how the harmonic series works technically, but um, they are different pitches, but the, they're pitches that kind of work together in a pleasant way. So we can ch just pick different ones. And it kind of all works. Some work better than others. You can also play around with tuning this one or automating the fine tune of one of them so that you get like like a pitch bend down or something. You can get some pretty interesting stuff. Um, I, I, I think it's good though what we have with only one and we can leave that second harmonic for like later. Maybe have like a different pitch coming in later in the drop because this is only what is this four bars so okay let's um make sure that this track is not clipping so i'm just gonna put a limiter on it but whatever we do here it's not gonna clip and let's just grab that one that one should be fine. I need to piss real quick. Um, let me grab a piece of music. Mm. Oh, I haven't bounced that one yet. Maybe I did. Recorded resampling ah, there we go how much of it how much is this hey why don't we have this hmm? normally you have a switch there called the raw For some reason I can't click that hmm. so only the intro I think Oh wait, this is version 1. Let's see, I hope there's a resampled version of uh, the track in here, so I can play that. Looks like it is. I'd... I'd some kind of a resampled version of this tune. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll have that playing while I'm gone. I need to take a piss real quick. I'll be back in just a little bit. 
Um, until then, you guys can listen to this thing. Oh, it's already external out. Okay, good. I'll be back in just a little bit. Just, uh, I just found out that this is the drop that I made in the last stream, I think. I actually think it needs a different intro, to be honest. These roads go forever. I like, the intro is good, but not for this drop, I think. Oh, it could work. Just need some extra sort of like thing on that transition. You know what? I feel inspired to work on that one suddenly. Should we do that? Should we, should we, should we hop over to that one? I already did it now. I already did it now. <laughs> that was the sound design session for today. We're, we're going into that. <laughs> into that one. Um, I hadn't heard it yet after last uh, stream. But... I actually quite like that. So it's, it's a it's a good start. <sighs> Do 
the other one can come later. I have a, I have an idea for that one. We have a little um, track idea, sort of like build up. So I can work on that one later. Like I said, I have um, I have a bunch of extra streams coming up in the upcoming week. So we're probably gonna. I'm I'm probably just gonna put all of those all of those track idea recordings on my computer and just gonna find like all the good ones and then just put those all in a folder so I can just go through them probably just pre-warp them as well so I don't have to bore you with warping an entire file because that's the only thing if you make like a, a recording like that just an idea and record it into your phone like I don't do it with a metronome so it's just going to be me just sort of like winging it and it's not going to be exactly in the right tempo of course um so i'll just get it as close as possible to 172 or 174 whatever the tempo should be and then i just put in warp markers and i start warping it around to kind of make it perfect um and then you can basically just start copying whatever you beatboxed in and then it's just you know really good for like getting ideas yeah, this track is interesting anyway. Yeah, I really like the drop so far. It's like... Oh, I think I changed something. Uh... I think I changed something that is not for the better. That's not for the better. What was it before? Before it was something di different. It has a lot more high end, which is not nice. See, this is one of those things that I mean. I kind of lost the the thing that I was going for the groove. Well, the groove is still there, but I started adding some extra stuff. See that extra note? That's what it was. So just without that. Okay, so I assume if I turn off that rack, it's going to sound pretty similar to what we had, I think. That's pretty much what we had. A little bigger, well, the, it was a little bigger, but... Could be coming from... this whole extra chain. There we go. Still not exactly the same, but it's 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 better. Much better. Like this is just some here I was playing around with adding something extra. See? But it just didn't sound interesting or good enough like it works but okay let's um lock the automation let's duplicate that one let's just take off that chain i don't really like that one so let's take it off The extra note is nice. Could also be something for the second drop, though. 
Like we could wait with that until the second drop. We can, we can leave these out until the second drop as well. That might actually be much better. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, let's take out... You could see it, my base face was starting to appear. We're just quickly going to arrange this real quick. I'm just going to copy that. We're going to get this. Yeah, I think it needs a different intro, to be honest, for this track, though. I, I feel like this intro is really nice that I made, but I think that intro is going to be um, is going to be it needs more of like a sustained bass, if you get what I mean. This is more like a rhythmic bass. I think that intro is I feel more of like a sustained bass coming after that intro. Um, but the vocal kind of works, though, so I might try salvaging some parts of the intro and doing something else but i i want to do that later i think i want to make the drops better um but let's say this is the that is how long 16 no 32 okay that's good then this is going to be the breakdown build up and then second drop right here let's paste all this right over here or no let's take this Let's drop that right there. And there, I'm going to bring these in. I think that would be really cool. So we get... So like second drop. Copy the drums as well. Oh, we... Need to copy the automation. Where did you get that hoodie? That hoodie is available on my own merchandise store on Teespring. So just use that link. Oh, one moment. Let me check if that link still works. Hang on tight. Oh, it does. But one moment. I'll grab you guys a different one. I have a new store, which is also Teespring, but it's the new store. I haven't changed that yet in my thing so um don't mind that don't mind that last uh, thing in the chat i'll just quickly change change it let's put it on my other screen um edit and let's put the new link in there that save that this is the new link that's the link to the new store. And uh, there you can get the, the hoodie. You can get it on t-shirts as well if you want. And there's a couple more. I, I should do more. I, I have a whole bunch of them that I have been working on but never really posted there. Um, I mean, I don't really get much sales on that store anyway. So it's not really something I'm going to put a lot of effort and time in. Unless it starts to, you know, pick up a little bit of sales maybe. But um, I do have a couple of ideas. Like if I do like... Um, like the music I'm working on now, the couple of tracks that I'm really happy with, um, when I'm going to be releasing those, I'll definitely have like a t-shirt, I guess, with like the, um, the artwork that I made for the release on it or something like that. Um, and I have some more designs that I made in the past, like I am a graphic designer after all, so I like doing that stuff, but, um, yeah, it's, it does, it, it's, it's not something that generates a lot of sales, it's just for fun, so, but you can get them there. I kind of, I would, I would have to say this one is the one that sells the best though. <laughs> the, 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 your snare is garbage uh, hoodie. That one sells the best for sure. Let's uh, fix that automation because you can see we have a bunch of automation happening here as well. So let's copy this and let's paste that right here. So we get... Now 
Now, actually, I think I should take. Let's copy this. And then let's copy this entire automation. Paste it right here. So we basically get the uh, same thing as what was happening here. But then with this new pattern, I think the second drop might actually start the same as the first drop. And then in the second health, we could bring that higher note in. This one as well. We're just going to get the same thing first. And let's, um, I mean, we're go probably going to shorten the second drop. It's probably not going to be the same length as the first one. But for now, I'll just make them the same length. So we just get this. That was a weird part here. I'm not sure why that sounded so strange. Rid of these. Not sure why those are there. gonna play around with the how the filter opens up as well because I saw certain sections I like it more than other ones like right here it sounds really good like some of these automations can be a lot more subtle than what they are right now like they so, so, sometimes they open up too much if you get what I mean and it can be a bit more subtle and then just putting like some extra effects on it. Like we need some swoops, uh, so, some swoops, <laughs> swoops, swoop de whoop, <laughs> scoop. <laughs> what the hell? Question is, are we going to use the 16th note things right away? I don't think so. I 
really like this transition, by the way. This, uh... I don't know. Really like that one. Um, yeah, we're not gonna use the 16 straight away. We're gonna make those come in later. And we're probably gonna have to work on the transition as well, because I don't like how it transitions right now. Yo, Ramon, welcome. Okay, um, I'm gonna do something, duplicate this channel, because I'm not sure if I'm, I want to use this snare or if I want to use a different one. I'm gonna, um, well, I could have just, let's just do that. Let's just remove that track again that I made. Um, save this project before we do anything. I'm gonna go into the project that I had open at the first uh, part of the stream. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to grab that snare drum channel because in there there's a basically all the snare drums from that sample pack that I often use from Vitae Lupus. Um, I basically went through them and all the ones that I liked, I put them inside of one drum rack and pitched them to a key that would work with a track in the key of D sharp. Now, we are not in the key of D sharp, we're in... Um, well, I tuned them to something that would be D-sharp Phrygian or D-sharp Major Phrygian. Um, one of the two could work. If if we're do, doing Major Phrygian, then I'm going to have to tune a couple of the snares in, in the rack to a different key. But that's not that big of a deal. Um, but we it was made for D-sharp Phrygian and we are in... What was it again? We were in, a, a, in G-sharp Harmonic Minor. But we were using in the drop, we were using the fifth mode or the fourth mode. I know the fifth mode of G sharp harmonic minor, which if I'm correct is F sharp major Phrygian that we ended up in. Yeah, we are in F sharp Phrygian. F sharp major Phrygian then in this case because the the parent skill that we were using for the entire intro is um was it was it b minor that we were in i think it was b minor sorry my bad i think it was in b minor let's check real quick in the in the in the paths yeah b minor okay um we were in b harmonic minor now i remember we were in b harmonic minor <clears throat> and then afterwards we were going to that E, D, F sharp thing. And we were building up towards F sharp at the end of the intro. Um, if we are in B harmonic minor, then the fifth mode of that is F sharp major Phrygian. So that's the kind of skill that we're using in the drop. So I'm going to have to tune a couple of the snare drums different, but that's not that big of a deal. I can just take that in the drums group here of that other project. We have this snare drum track. I can just drag that into here. 
And that's going to take like, uh, it's, it's basically going to add like uh, about close to 100 snare drums inside of one rack in here, which I cleverly called the snare selector. <laughs> um, and all we have to do is just take all of the snare drum MIDI things here and just copy those and paste them on this new track. So now we just have, I can mute all of those so we don't, now we have all of these and we can just try out different snare drums. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tune them all different because we're obviously in a different key, right? So this is D sharp up to F sharp would be three semitones. Yes. I can just put, take a MIDI pitch device, put that in front of the rack and just say plus three. Now, all of these samples are already going to be tuned to the key of F sharp instead of D sharp. So now we can already start listening to what that would do. See, and we can check these. Now, these that are um, D sharp. Yeah, this is going to be annoying because all the ones that are labeled D sharp are now F sharp. <laughs> um, that means that all the ones that are labeled F sharp needs to be changed up one semitone. Because those are minor third and we're now using and we're using them in a project that is a major third. So if we're gonna use any of these, we are gonna tune them different. But we can start trying out different ones. Like this one would have to be up one. Extra, that extra synth coming in is so good. Even though it's so subtle, that... That extra little thing is just... It's really quiet, but it's, it kind of works. I might compress it though, I might compress it quite heavily so that it's sort of like, um, it's not really changing in level when the filter opens up, but it just, um, we could do that right away. Let's, f instead of talking about it, just fucking do it. <laughs> um, let's just do that in front of the uh, volume automation. Just do like a nice heavy amount of compression that basically is already slightly compressing when the filter is closed. Like that. This one, let's make it a different color. And I can check, by the way, if we're still right. 
Those are hitting on a C sharp. It, it's labeled A sharp. That's the perfect fifth above D sharp. So we've tuned them up to F sharp. Perfect fifth above F sharp is indeed C sharp. So those are still tuned right. Um, I can advise you so much to do this. If you are working on your drums and you have like a whole... Especially if you make a lot of like one-shot kicks, one-shot snares yourself. Um, throw them all into, a, into, into an instrument rack. And how I did this, by the way. It's really simple. You've just... Put them all in a rack. These are all different chains inside one rack. You can see it's like a hundred of them or something. And then just go in here to the chain selector. And at first, all of these are going to be just like that first one. So they're all just going to be like that. So underneath each other. You basically just do this with all of them. So you can do that really simply if you just control A and then just do that. Just drag those out. Right, so if we go all the way to the bottom, take that one as well, drag it all out like that. So that's what you do first, make them all like that. And then you just right click, distribute ranges equally, and it turns it into that. So every one of these positions has like a different snare drum. And then you just map this to a metronome. This, this this white thing right here, this selector that if we do this, moves around. And then just click this button right here so it automatically selects the chain that is selected. Um, and that way you can really easily try out a bunch of different kick drums, try out a bunch of different snare drums, and even change them throughout the track. Like if you, if you at some point think, hmm, I want to try out how it sounds with a different snare drum, just duplicate the channel so you don't lose the original one, or do what I just did, just make it a different color so you can easily find back the original snare that you had. And then just go through them and see if you maybe find a different one that works way better. Um, and you can put like a couple of different snares in there, like maybe a high-pitched one, one that is more of like a clap, one that's more like a, a low fundamental snare drum. And that way you can really easily find interesting snare drums. <laughs> like a snare like that as well that's quite interesting as well might want to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of saturation on this one because it's a bit weaker than the other ones maybe just a little um i don't think there is a limit to how many chains you can have because if you go all the way down here with me you can see i actually reached 128 i have more than 128 and these last couple of ones are all stacked onto that last one and i just turned them off and at that point i just realized oh i finished i have more than 128 let's just stop you know <laughs> <laughs> because i was like it's not gonna make sense but these last one i just left them in there because they were all good um and I kind of reached the end of the pack. So at that point, I I basically, there's like, I think 160 or 170 snare drums in that pack. And I ended up with like, what is that? 134 or something like that, that I really liked. And those, and, and there's a lot of them that are the same sample, but pitched to different pitches. Um, because I have like um, certain instances where I have the same snare sample and one is pitched to the root of the track, one is pitched to the minor third, or in this case I'm now turning them all into major thirds, um, or they're pitched to the perfect fifth. Because sometimes a, the same sample on a different sort of like interval of the scale can sound really good. Yeah, it's indeed, it's nice. And, and now when I... I'm actually gonna save this as a, as a rack. Basically, I'm, I'm just I'm probably going to save this as a rack um, and just uh, especially the one that's in D sharp or the one that's in F or in F. I'm probably going to make like different versions for every key as well. Like have like one for F, one for F sharp, one for G and you can just drag it in 
and just automatically all the samples in there are going to be in the right key. You can just pick and pee, pick which, whichever works best, you know? It's so much easier. And it's quicker, you know? It speeds up your workflow a lot more, which is always good. See, this is an example. Right here we have two snare samples that are the same. This one and this one. Only difference is, is that this one is now F sharp and this one is major third above that, that is A sharp. So, this is the snare drum in A sharp. And this is the same snare drum but in D sharp or in F sharp. I might be able to make it work if I have like some kind of a rhythmic element that plays this pattern that sort of like that sort of like uh, melody that the bass is doing in the intro and in the breakdown because I think that's what it's missing to really sort of like tie the thing together now it sort of like sounds like there's two individual tracks going on at once you have the drops track and then you have the intro and the breakdown track which is it doesn't sound like they belong in the same track yet which could be just an issue because they should be different and they really just don't belong together. Or it's a matter of it needs something that ties the whole thing together, which I'm not entirely sure about yet. I was hoping the vocal was going to do that, but sometimes it, it, that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, the bass is, is, is getting there. Um, it's, not, it's definitely not done yet. I feel like the bass is... Um, it needs a bit of... Um, Yeah, I think the, the whole movement on it can be improved, like... Like, I think it might already sort of like open up too much here, so may might even actually start decreasing these a little. So the effect is even more subtle on like the filter movement on the bass and and then that way we can also kind of keep the parts where it really opens up for the sections that kind of really need you know that extra accent um and that kind of makes those sections feel a bit more powerful i guess as well um 
Yeah, I definitely need something extra, but that's fine. I can also see that this bass is definitely not loud enough yet. That's another thing I can see. Easily fixed. It's just a better sub, to be quite honest. Um, or the sub needs to be brought out more. That's that's one of the two things it needs to do. Um... Do you hear that? Like that sound it has right here. That's really cool. Sounds different here from here. It has a bit more higher frequencies, which is coming from this, I think. That actually sounds really nice. So what if we have that? That's sort of like the lowest position. So that is... Makes a pretty big change. that I think could be good to do is making that first one a little shorter that first one that hits on the on the first beat 
so that we get kind of like a little gap in between these notes. And then of course we need to play around with the release time as well so that we do have a little bit of release but, but we also kind of have a little gap if you get what I mean. Gonna make it feel a bit more rhythmic. Oh yeah, we need to do it everywhere, not just here. Might not even do it on on all of them. Although it is kind of nice. Let's loop that first section so I can hear what the release time needs to be. Something like that. Gives that first hit a little bit more, how do you say it? A little bit more. Um, power? Impact? I don't know. Best way is to describe that, but... So like thinking if I like it more or not. You know what? It might just be good on that first one. Maybe every four, every four bars. That might be good. So we get, we sort of like accentuate that first one. It's very subtle. It's very subtle, but I do like it. So let's take that. Uh, before we do this, let's uh, not do that right like that. Let's first lock the automation so that we don't destroy all the automation happening everywhere. Um, and then I'm just going to copy this one as well to here. And then just mute these upper notes because here we just need this groove. And it's such a nice groove. I really like that. Um, copy it over here and just remove that. I don't know. Okay, let's take. This and drop it right here and right there as well.
I moved something again. Did you see that? Sometimes I have that. And I'll just click a track and my mouse moves. And for some reason, Ableton lags for a little moment. And then it just drags the track into wherever my mouse moved. Um, that plugin is Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. Which is a really nice plugin, by the way. Absolutely insane for vocals. Forever. I don't know. The drive is actually pretty nice sounding as well. Sounds pretty... has a nice distortion to it. I do think we're gonna have a snare drum on the root of the track. That's uh, sounding pretty nice. All the all the ones that I'm labeled right now in a different color are mostly all the ones that are labeled D sharp, which are now F sharp because of this uh, pitch device that's in front of it, pitching it up three semitones. See, all those ones kind of sound nice. That one really, really works. Um, I need to piss again. How late is it? 11.52. I, uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be another long stream. Just like I said I wasn't going to do, but hey, whatever. I don't mind. Um, hope you guys don't have to work early tomorrow. I'm uh, going to take a little piss. I'll uh, let this play on uh, repeat the entire thing. 
while I'm gone. I'll be back in just a little bit and uh, see what we're gonna end up with. Uh, end up on. Um, great stuff, my dude. Maybe a second long note bass. Uh, bass in between the fourth or eight bar, or invert the melody. Um, I don't necessarily think it needs um, melodic variations. What I think it needs is like some extra little things on top and um the so like maybe maybe replacing the main bass every now and then or layered on top of it while the main bass kind of gets high pass so that you kind of uh, lose the main bass a little except for the higher frequencies of it and then so like bring some something else in um doesn't need to change much in terms of mel mel melody itself i think i actually quite like that repetitive repetitive thing for this one but that's I, that's also why I think I might need to alter the intro uh, for this one. But I'll figure it out. I really need to piss first. So um, I'll be back in just a little bit. is out. Ah, 
that's automated. Ah. Okay. The MacGyver is one. Sometimes you just have to. Um. Could maybe try that. Now that went from this. Leave me here, I won't be long. Do you? I won't be long. See how it just ends a lot quicker? I probably could make it even cleaner with Melodyne, to be honest. Still a little... Especially because of the vibrato speeding up as well. With Melodyne, I could actually fix that to be perfect. Could actually take the vibrato out on the part that sped up. See, especially the end is a little weird. I mean, it's better. That snare does work. I agree with you. That one 
least uh, until now the best one. Let's give it a, a different color from the other ones. Let's make it green. No, that's that's too similar to the other one. Uh, let's make it um, pink. Pink is the best one until now. really well too. Has a similar tone, but it's a little shorter. And a little less distorted in the in the tail. Let's see if we can make the drop better. I, 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 I kind of like the snare drum. Um, so let's just uh, say that's the one that we're going to use. I quite like it. Let's hide that. Okay, so what could this section need to make it better? Um... Okay, I do hear something. Let's see. Um... Uh... Wait, that's the wrong one. another variation that sounds really good by the way i don't think i want to bring it in right here already but that would be one that is really good as a variation maybe here this uh, second health because we kind of need the variation between these two sections um that would be that one that one and that one and then doing that.
don't like this uh, reverse here. Sounds a little strange. Um, probably going to need different reversing. Um... <laughs> I do still think that these can be shorter. Just a fraction shorter. Just like that first one on the downbeat. It just sounds tighter if we do that. It's literally just uh, a 16th note shorter. It's kind of cool, but might be nice to bring in later. I am debating to maybe take <laughs> these out. And really only have a kick on the downbeat. See what we get. And then maybe bring it in here on the last bit on the last bit. Yeah, I think that I think that's gonna be better. We need to fill it up with some more extra stuff. We need more percussion, I think. Some stuff that is gonna fill it up. Maybe even a kick in a different spot, maybe right there. Right there. Or right there. Or I don't know, right there. It all work. in the chat right now. Oh, that might be good.
let's try vital. That's easier. Uh, oh, I can do it in serum as well. I have these right here. I can do it with that. Um, or I can just use the sub as well. Um, <clears throat> oh no. Let's let's use vital. I want to I want to add a um, key track noise. So like here. So what we want is we want to have some noise. And then we want to have a key track LFO. Maybe minus 24 for the level. Okay, minus 12. Or maybe even zero. It's going to be nice. And then we can assign another LFO that is set to envelope mode. One four. And then assign that to the amount of that LFO modulation. And then we can control the length of that noise with this. That way we can really em emphasize that first one. Maybe only here. We can even go stuff like that oh that's actually quite cool what if we do oh wait let's let's do this on the first beat and then do those ones on the off beat that's kind of cool Maybe even just on the offbeats, to be honest. I like those more. can even get like stuff like that which is really cool you can make it work even on different parts or different lengths but that's that, that's kind of good this this whole thing and then we need something more happening here let's see higher and then bum like maybe even a reese like a high reese coming in we can high pass it so it's not interfering with the sub just so like doing a little uh yeah a little reesey boy a little high pitch reese like a faster mom, 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 mom. Um. 
Something like that. Heck, we could even... Come on, you can do it. That. That one over here, move this one over here. And then we're just gonna do the uh, pitch bend itself here. We'll just do that ourselves, like that. So we can just remove this note. Don't have to use any glide. We don't have to make it monophonic or anything, it's just going to be uh, done by ourselves. So now, is this MPE enabled? It is, so we should already get... Yeah, so you can already hear that that, that would work really well. Goes down a little bit too fast though. Needs to do... On down... Like this. Better. And maybe on the end, I want to curve it on the end, I say. Go back down towards that G maybe, or F sharp. That. Yeah, that should be good. And then now we can start working on the patch. So. I'm going to try that thing that I did earlier. Because that is actually pretty cool. Um, octave up. RM from B. And then go in here. Take this down. Take the width down. And bring this up and then let's uh give this five voices or something like that and then detune this one oh that was a nice one on on Almost nineteen. No, almost right. Eighteen. I'm listening to the speed of the oscillation. Okay. Sounds like shit, but let's bring it down an octave. Okay, let's distort the hell out of it. Let's go for diode. Let's do filter on it. E track that. Uh, that doesn't work with the. Uh... That's annoying. Okay, well, not big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. Um, not that big of a deal. Let's make a new clip. Turn. No, fuck. Not do that. Let's turn off MPE. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, no MPE. One semi to, or no, let's do... Um, let's 
let's do 12 semitone pitch bend. Although one is probably going to be better. Oh wait, I know what we can do. One up and, and 12 down. Let's um, turn on this, so make it monophonic. Turn on glide. Something like that maybe. Let's add a D sharp. Or no, no F sharp. That's too low. F sharp to uh, G. But instead of going to G, I'm going to F sharp as well. Remember, I did that one semitone pitch bend. So we can do this. Um, that. That. Maybe leave it up for a little bit. Then we can even bring this one here, maybe. And then go all the way down again here, which is that minus 12. So we get that at the end. Okay. Let's see if we can make it better. Nice. Let's do a bit of chorus, maybe. Also try FM. Some sound different. 
CRM sounds pretty cool. That's also pretty cool. Um, we can use an LFO for that. Interesting. Not sure if this is going to work, but it's not really the type of reason that I was thinking of. I, I, I was I, I was thinking of one that's like uh, an octave higher, but it kind of does already work. <laughs> Not really. Um, in it. We are gonna do the light thing because the pitch is all right. It's just. That's probably going to be better. Let's do 12 down, one up. Okay. Well, I could load this one real quick, the one that I already made. I made it off stream. Um, this one, five voices. It's a similar thing that I was doing just now. Set this to 1 and 12. Ooh. Like, that could be fun. We definitely need to resample it because there's some weird stuff happening in the tails of this one. That one is definitely nice. That's gonna work. And then we're gonna probably do, um, Almost thinking, can I do something with this one as well going up? Dun dun. Is this MPE? 
better is. It is. Nice. 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 Ah, yeah, I'm actually doing MPE stuff as well. There's slight pitch bends on the start of this note. But that means we can do... Something interesting. Plus 12... Oh yeah, stuff like that. Maybe up even more. This one could also try automating this one a little bit in this section. That might actually be really good to do. Yeah, that's just probably going to be all we need. Not on the first one, but. Like on the last part, we need to go down more and quicker. <clears throat> um, on then we don't have any automation, it's all in the pitch bend. What if we do... Not exactly. Exactly, not exactly, but like.
yeah, I'm just going to leave it at, at that for now. Um, Need something happening here, um, some kind of a rise or something during this section. Go in here. Let's grab some kind of a sample. Atmosphere. Let's go into this pack. Atmosphere. Sure. Let's make it a sampler. This is an F, so let's put that on F2. Set that to 12. Can even do like a really short section. something that could be cool percussion but in a particular pattern could be ghost snares actually Ooh. um how am i gonna make it let's see ghost snare let's see what we get Well, whatever, I'll, I'll take one. 
just real quick. Probably gonna take a different one, but just set it up real quick. So don't lose the idea. Come on, group it in a drum rack. Holy shit. Ableton is having a seizure. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's just do zero. I just want to have the hit itself. Um. You know, I'm already lost it. And that one is going to be there. We're just going to have... Find another one. Don't hear that one at all because it's just too. Uh, let's do that. Give them a bit of a fade out as well. So that we don't get any clicks. Probably gonna need different ones that have a bit more of a metallic sound. We might need to make it with addictive drums. But I'm just quickly gonna try out adding some saturation to this track. So we can beef them up a little. Because they're a little quiet. Yeah, we can easily do that. Bit much. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go addictive drums. See if we can do a little extra thing on top of it. Uh, write ourselves a quick pattern. <clears throat> we can just copy the pattern real quick. We're actually only going to need that one, probably, but... Let's distort it a little bit.
I need to find a good one. This one is quite good. Maybe if we take... So we can get rid of these. A bit more rim shot. Alright, that one is going to be better. Oh, yes. Something like that. It's going to be good. that does it takes the um the regular snare is now a different pitch from the overhead and the room but that actually sounds really nice so you get let's mute these as well that's just a snare and then that's the overhead and the room which would normally be this and you're just pitching it up a little and that way you're kind of changing the balance of the entire snare. Like that's similar, but then just the entire thing up. Okay, let's um, get rid of these kicks and let's just copy this pattern. It's not exactly what I what I wanted it to be. Um, That, that, that plays kind of nice, too. Hmm. Oh, that might be nice. Pretty quiet, but we can beef it up a little. Just add another... <laughs> Just add another electric trash. Why not? Not too loud. I kind of like that. Do. Length of four. What should we do? Uh, no, that's a bit much. Maybe this one different. Uh, no.
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's um, make this into its own thing. Let's go. Why is the dream shot so loud? Even. Oh, that could be cool. The sixteenth uh, shakers are a bit much as well. If you if you ask me. They're they're like a bit a bit all over the place. So let's uh, try out maybe doing a bit of a bit of LFO tool on it or something. Give it a bit of uh, movement. Maybe every beat. Doing a little something like that. That they become a bit more like that. to hear it without the vocal real quick because it's distracting me a bit from the actual groove hmm which one are we gonna do could also go Off. A bit weird. Kind of want to have that rim shot in there as well. I That one actually sounds really good. That that last one, which could also work really well on this one. It should be hitting right there, and it's pretty quiet, so you get uh, maybe in on the on the last one somewhere.
making them a bit snappier. Everybody has gone to bed. We only have six viewers left. Who are the diehard viewers that are still watching right now? Raise your hands in the chat. Okay, it's a bit much right off the start, but I do like that extra snare thing. But maybe make a slightly different one at the start here. like that as a first so like one let's make that continue until here Okay, yes, this one is nice, except for that last one. I don't like it. I do like that. Maybe we need... That's cool. What if we do that? Ooh, groovy. take them out here bit much don't really need that there I need to bring the vocal back otherwise we're not gonna hear the full thing the other one this one is suddenly uh massive okay let's go i might actually wait with that um, faster thing. Let's see, where is it? Right here. Okay, so this part. I'm gonna copy that over here. And I'm gonna just extend this one. Because otherwise it's gonna get too busy with the vocal. Um, and then we can have that coming in here so we get 
I'm probably gonna have to change the kick here as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's get rid of all of these kicks right here. Let's just copy this pattern that we have over here. Like that. And then let's see if we need to remove or add a few. Yeah, here we're gonna add this this one back, I think. Duplicate that, enable this one as well. We could try. Mm. is slowly taking more and more shape and it's slow, slowly starting to sound better and better um didn't phase have like some nice sorry i'm just uh checking real quick i have a sample pack here by phase where was it again phase sounds didn't you have some nice noise thingy white noise no I just need a good, good noise thing. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. how you do it um and then we can lock the automation duplicate this one reverse it and then we're gonna do the 
opposite so we want to do let's duplicate this can we can we mirror the automation i don't think we can see ableton that's kind of stuff that we want i mean i don't think we can but who knows maybe i'm wrong and do that Do that. There's also this. Ah, we can mirror it. There we go. There we go. But we might want to do that different, actually. <laughs> All that work for nothing. <laughs> I want to do something like this. This section is getting nice. Just a little bit of noise really did a lot. what that's doing that automation it's assigned to the decay time or the decay curve of the lfo shape inside of serum so it's basically curving the shape of the lfo that's creating the shape of the base this one you can see it if we play it now so it makes the first one a little bit more stabby It's very subtle, but it definitely works. And I think it could be nice on this last one as well. Let's see. This one, maybe. Very subtle. That the second one is a little bit less big. It's very subtle, but I'm fine with that. So that's going to be doing that. And then let's take this and paste that right here. And then it repeats. So we can just do this.
kind of cool. We could actually do this, and then I was doing that. Where was I doing that? Right there. Do it like that, and then remove that first one. I love the syncopation that these drums are getting. Like, without that snare drum layer, it just sounds so much less syncopated. It's more like a stepper, that way. But with the, the extra ghost snares, it just becomes a roller. I mean, first section is still a bit, a bit stepper, but then the moment we get to the second half, it just... at the end let's see but mm. even do let's try this Here we go, let's check if we can make it work. B, hit control. Then select these, hit control, Something like that. Uh, okay, maybe. Might work. So maybe something something else there, but
a bit much. I actually really like it in the first section, so maybe we just have to do this. What if I search for breath? Do we have some breath samples? Oh, we apparently do. Let's see what we got. Do we have some... Breathe, breathe. Yeah, okay, no, not that. Might work. Almost needs it on every beat then, but I think that's going to be a bit much. Yeah, that's going to be a bit much. Making it more in the key of what it should be. Even though it's noise, it definitely has a key. Like... Right? Just... Boost a bit around there. Should we add reverb to it? I don't think that's going to be good. I think it's going to take away from how tight that sounds, but we could try it out doing like some high pass reverb or something. Something like this, maybe. That up. Is down. That up. Uh, 
that does kind of work. Hmm. You don't even hear it. Entirely, what it should be. I, I don't really like the reverb, to be honest. Like, it could have some reverb, but it needs to be shorter. Like, pretty short. Yeah, that's more like it. Like, Yeah, you mean like what I was doing here? Like I'm actually doing that here and I think it's actually pretty cool. One moment. Here. Kido. There, I made it also shorter. I can do that here. Because I basically just did this. Like this one, it might not even have to rise in pitch, <laughs> to be honest. We could also just try doing no pitch rise, just the filter rise itself. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> This one is also adding stuff. Might actually do different hats.
was weird. I need to copy this with the automation. Copy. Drums from here. Paste them over here. Not liking how it transitions into the breakdown, by the way, but that's uh, that's for later. I would need something extra here, and I'm totally aware of that. And probably is going to have to be some kind of noise or something in the background. Holy shit, a gas bubble. <laughs> An air bubble in my stomach. Um, let's see. Some kind of noise or background thing. I know, I know, I know. I have an i7-7820X.
Yes. That sounds cool. That's cool. I like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit less on the first one, and then the second one fully. So we get more. Before I do that, we can play around with the position in here. Like, that's gonna change the tone of the noise. You can't automate a position, but what you can do is you can just make a new copy of this file. You can just say, if you wanted to change right here, you can just do this, and then take a different position for there. Now you're gonna get a different there. Now you get... See? So you get a different one there. That one actually sounds pretty cool. Honestly. That actually sounds really cool. Ooh, it's like a, a little weird a breath kind of thing. Like we could even do it every two bars. Uh, every, every four is better. Now, what I want to do though, is I'm going to bring this one down to minus four or something like that. And I'm just going to use some gain automation to accentuate that one part where it's different. So I like that little section where it comes up here. Sort of like right there. So what we're going to do is just do a little automation here. Something like that or maybe even something like this. A couple of decibels, maybe five or something. So that one is just sticks out a little bit more. And we can maybe bring it bring it up a little here. So 
it's a little bit more prominent. Like this is without. And then this with. See how it just sticks out a little bit more? Which is pretty nice. You can just copy that. Could even try maybe doing a different one on this one. Sure. Gain automation might actually be a little bit too much. Like it's very subtle, but probably just needs. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's better. It's more subtle. Like here, it's so much in the background of the mix, you almost don't hear it. But I, I'll, I'll kid you not, if we take it out in this section, you're still going to notice that. There we go. Take it out here. And I think I'm going to change it here, to be honest. Because here I don't really know like that breath. So let's change it here. And yo, Kerala, welcome. It's actually almost 2 a.m. I have to be quiet, but welcome. Welcome. Welcome to this place. The noise fits really well, yeah. I think it's just gonna stick on this one in this second half. Now I now we have that that extra breath kind of thing. I'm actually almost wondering if we really need this breath. Let's take it out.
like I'm thinking it could be nice to use that breath somewhere in a section like this instead of having that kick so let's see if that works so that we get um Do you hear what I mean? Make it louder. I, don't know. I think I, I think I'm gonna use it like that. I don't know. And we need to there is something else still rising here, I think. I don't. Yeah, there's still some Atmos going. Hmm? Or is it a reverb automation? Where is that reverb automation coming from? The vocal? Yeah. I don't know. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. I like that. Which means we're probably going to find something else. For that first beat, but that works. I don't know. Still can't can get over how much the ghost snares add. Like without those ghost snares, it's just so empty. I don't know. I'm just gonna add a second EQ. Fuck that. I could do it in here, but I'm just gonna do a secondary EQ. I need to. I'm gonna do it with a Pro Q. We need to um, get rid of a bit of the fundamental in the ghost snare hits, but not like completely remove it, but only like remove it from the till so that stuff that's around here we want to make that dynamic but instead of doing it making it down going down like that now it's basically taking it down when the transient hits but we want to do the opposite we want to make it go up when the transient hits and then bring this one down see we're cleaning up that Fundamental, we're still having it in the transient, but in the tail it's being taken out, so that way we, we make them sound less muddy. We can even zone in on that like that. And then do another one here. Maybe a bit less. we can even accentuate the transient if we have to and if we really want to get technical we're gonna do do it like this so it really only responds when we want it to but that's already too much we probably don't even need that just on the auto mode usually works well Let's see how that sits in the mix. And I'll, I'll turn it on and off so we can hear the difference. Let's do a little extra high-end boost as well. Make dynamic. I want to bring the high-end up a little bit when it hits, so...
probably gonna hear it better in this section, by the way. Hear how it brings them more up into the sort of like the the upper frequencies instead of the lower mids. Even widen this one a bit. So it really brings up that area. Can't forget the noise, of course. That has to be there as well. Now, one thing that I want to try out <clears throat> on the first kick. Let's try taking out this noise. I'm not sure if we actually get some noise of there at the first kick. I think we do. Yeah. We get that get that little extra thing. Let's take it out on the first kick. So we get basically that. Um, we could even make it come in there or something. Something like that, maybe. Uh, no, not. Maybe on the snare, actually. Or maybe we should just have it on the kick. Yeah, we should just have it on the kick, actually. It's way better. Just adds a little bit of extra stab on the kick. It's nice. That's F sharp. It should be F sharp. The, the riser was out of tune all this time. I still think it gets a bit too busy in this section. Um, Gets a bit too busy here. Mm. What is the automation doing here? Yeah, the automation is starting to do more here as well. So let's not do that. See if we get... I have an idea for this. Um, 
what if we duplicate this? Get rid of everything. Let's lock the automation before we do that. Because I want to keep the automation. Um, I can keep that locked. And then it, the vocal comes in right here, right here. Okay. Let's copy this. And I'm going to basically do the opposite. And that. Now I have just these ones in a separate one. Something like that. That one works. Um, I'm thinking of something else, actually, doing something extra on it, which would be this right there. Let's make it exactly there and then do subtle but it's adding like little little pitch envelope very subtle but okay we can
sounds weird. You can duplicate it again. Get rid of that boy. Get rid of that boy. Watch these. Do that again. Wait, I need to go in here. And I need to take all these. Not that one. That one. That one. And that one. And move them up to there. The breakdown I'm not happy with yet. I'm really not liking how that transitions. Um, but this is getting there. I mean, I still have the version pre-stream.
works too, but still have that old snare as well. This one. Snare is still up for change, to be honest. I didn't, I didn't make these snares. Um, these snares are from a sample pack. Um, actually. Oh, wait, you, you are on Twitch. Actually. There, you have them. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how, how much they are, but they're not really that expensive. Um, but they're really good. Um, and they also come with a project file that includes like if we have here this is the sample pack and if we have here we it also comes with these um five projects that's basically how the snares were made so in in there you've got like a group with like a snare basically from the pack and you can just uh go in and see how they were made which is quite nice I really like it, um, but they're really good. They're they're really good snare drums. Um, like they're all like really good drum and bass snare drums. So I, I I just chucked them into a rack and I basically just went through all of these, all of the ones that I liked. I chucked them into a rack and I tuned them all in this case to D sharp. Um, and some of them are tuned to F sharp, which is like the the minor third above D sharp. And then some of them are tuned to A sharp, which is uh, the perfect fifth. And then I put this pitch thing in front of it because this track is in F sharp. So we're going up plus three. So that's how they are now all F sharp related. Um, but that way you can really easily just chuck all the good ones in a rack, make sure they're in, in the pitch that, that are because they're all like labeled with hertz so that's quite nice you can really easily see what the fundamental is um just put them in a rack and then just pitch them around so they work because otherwise if you if you, like you could just also take all of these and just put them in a rack and just call it a, call it a day um but then there's also going to be a lot of ones that are not exactly in the in a pitch that is in tune with your track um and i feel like for snares like these you want to have them in tune um, because there's a clear fundamental that that that's really giving it sort of like the tone, right? So I just I just spent a day yesterday just just doing that, just basically uh, putting them into a rack, and it's quite nice because that way you can really easily just go through and find a good snare drum and try out different ones as well. That's that's the best part of it.
that one I like as well. And indeed, maybe you actually come across a couple of ones that you like and you just take bits and pieces of every one of them and just make a new one out of them. Like take the transient of one of them, take the, the tail of another one. Like that one has a really nice tail. That works really well too. Totally different type of snare drum, but a really good one as well. is really good too. Yeah, it's 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 crazy how much like one snare drum can make a, a difference. heavy.
like how beefy that one is. That one just that just really adds weight to that first section. <laughs> That one is really good, um, or at least I think that one is really good. I had another one which I made, which I made uh, pink. Where's that one? There. Also D sharp. So in this case F sharp. We can combine these two. I like the weight of the other one, but the tail, the metallic sound of the tail of this one. So I'm, I think I'm gonna make a combination of these two. Oh wait, that one is A sharp. That would that would it be on on uh on the on the uh it's not A sharp it's um C sharp um and that would be it on F sharp but I'm I'm liking it lower. We can really quickly test out what it sounds like with the two of them together. Copy the snare channel here. It's gonna freeze a little bit because it's like 130 snare samples. Okay, let's select the other one on this one. And let's give that fade in. We're gonna have to uh, really get rid of the fundamental completely in this one to make that work, but it could work. What if we A little bit too long if we do that but something like that could work anyways i'm gonna stop streaming because it's uh, 2 30 a.m i said i was not gonna stream till late and it's now already 2 30 a.m and i have to work on monday which it already is <coughs> thanks for being here um definitely made a huge change today so that's good I'm going to be streaming a couple of times more in the upcoming week, so um, probably from Wednesday on, I'm going to be streaming more. So if you want to be there, then uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, join the Discord server. Link to the Discord server is in the chat right now, and uh, join the Discord because that's where I will post when I go live next week. Yeah, this tune is uh, starting to sound really good. I wasn't too sure about the drop idea at first, um, but it's really starting to come together. And I really like how it's starting to sound. I just, I'm not entirely sure if the intro is the right one for this drop. That's something I'm still a little bit unsure about. I'll play the whole thing with the intro and uh, I'll see you guys soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.